this morning. We are so glad to have you here. It is really good to be in God's house with this many people in it. I mean, I'm so excited. I'm just so excited. Oh, okay. In your um, yellow papers, in memory or in honor of, <coughs> if it, oh golly, if there is an asterisk by the name, you are to take your lily home with you today. So please remember to take your lily home. Um, Monday, the office will be closed. Men's club is at 5 o'clock Monday the 18th. Church council is at 6 o'clock Monday. And then we are going to get to eat next week. The local mission luncheon is next week the 24th. So please mark those on your calendar. Do we have any other announcements this morning? Please, visitors, we'd like you to sign in if you feel like it, if you would be uh, honorous with your name so that we can say thank you for coming. And we were glad to have you in our house of worship this morning. So now let us stand and praise God on this holy Easter day. Surely the presence.
I ask you, the uh, sponsors, the church, and also the parents here, will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church by, teach, by your teachings, examples that may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their place openly, and to lead a Christian life? According to the grace given to you, we remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both the rejection of sin and the commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these person or this person now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will sign in this person. We will love and give us. And in the Lord, and the rest of God, we become faithful in the service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together professing the Christian faith as we already have this morning, but again, as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the earth. He descended to the end. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to the end. He sitting on the right hand of the Father, and on the hand of the Church of the Living Heaven. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing else exists but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light in the days of Noah. You saved those on the ark through water. And the flood you set in the clouds of rainbow. And when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell them God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John, anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless the gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness through their lives, that dying and being raised in Christ, they may share in the final victory. Praise to you, Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit, well, today is a very special day, as I've already mentioned, and this is a time when we recognize a precious gift, a child that God has given us through this family. And today we're going to do baptism, and as I said, the dedication of her life to uh, at Walker, Catherine, Poland, is that how I say it right? I don't want to mess that up. And uh, I'm so glad that they're here today. Glad that, that is, I get to, this is my first baptism in the church here. At this church, not first ever. I've been doing this a long time. And uh, so if I mess up, just say it's his first time. But I am so honored today to be able to take this child in my arms and baptize her with water. But God baptized her with his spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Remember your baptism. <laughs> Walker, this water's cold. Walker, Catherine, Poland, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Congratulations, family. 
Yeah. Congratulations, church. Amen. Amen. We want to continue here. The Holy Spirit with me with work within you, that being born through water and spirit, you may be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now is our joy to welcome this new sister and brothers in our friend Christ through, through baptism you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and are made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. Amen. Thank you, family, for letting me be part of that. Okay, it's time to go home now. That's good. <laughs> I remember my baptism, and I remember the pastor took us down to the uh, lake shore uh, with my grandfather and my brother, and I remember uh, as an adult what a great, exciting time that is, and I remember my, bringing my children for baptism and dedicating their life to Christ, and I'm so thankful that I did, because by the help of the church and by the body of Christ, they have grown to be great adults, and I'm not just, I'm not just prejudiced, but I believe that. And he's through the grace of God. So let's continue to pray for Walker. Let's pray for their family. And uh, and pray that God will continue to bless you. Amen. Amen. Are there prayers this morning? I want to read scripture to you first. I got so excited I almost missed that part. But I'm going to read to you scripture today from Psalms 118, verses 14 through 24. And if you'd like to turn with me, you can. It's in your pew Bible, page 565. And let us uh, share God's word together. Uh, 118 verses 14 through 24. The Lord is my strength and my mind. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The, he, the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live. And recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Are there prayers to the people this morning? Anyone? I'd like for us to continue to pray for uh, what's going on in Ukraine and also in Russia. Pray for our service men and women that are surrounding those areas and also those that have lost loved ones in that conflict. And also, John, we continue to lift up you and your sister this morning. Anyone else? We'll go up north again next week. Safe travels for Gary and, and Denise. Anyone else? Do we have joys among us? Anyone? We were blessed with lots of children in our class today. Lots of children yes. today. Let the chaos begin. <laughs> I think I had seven today. Seven? Didn't oh, I have seven? Wow. Anyone else? I have a joy. I have my grandbabies and uh, my daughter and uh, her husband with her today. Glad to have them here. And uh, our house will never be the same. <laughs> it's wonderful. Anyone else? Okay, let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for every person that's here today. We thank you, dear God, that you allow us to come to your house. Lord, we just uh, pray for those in Ukraine and Russia. We pray for those that have uh, sick family and folks at their house, Lord, that need a very special prayer. God, for the unspoken requests we have, for travel mercies, for all the things, Lord, that we face in life. Lord, may we know that you're always walked with us. And Lord, you've never forsaken us or left us. You've always been by our sides. And Lord, we just pray now, Lord, to continue to realize that. And Lord, begin to live out a fruitful life for your kingdom. And God, we thank you for the precious gift of Walker this morning. God, how precious it is to hold a child in our arms and, and remind them of your grace and and your love in day to day, Lord, as we go forward. And God, I pray that you bless their family. And now, Lord, as we pray together, I pray we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is 322, Up from the Grave, He Arose. Would you please stand if you're able? For the sake of the first one. Carter, stand up. 
Can you see? All right. Carter, stand up. Carter, stand up. Get, sing. One, two, three, go.
Settle down, children. <laughs> no, y'all got Easter baskets, y'all are excited. Did every kid get one that needed one? Caleb, did you get one? Uh oh. Did Caleb get a basket? Yes, it's very small. Okay, good deal. <laughs> God is so good. And all the time. God is good. So right. This morning we invite our ushers to come now to receive our morning offering. Come. that you give us in life. We take this time and this service, Lord, to lift up the gifts that we are to give back. And Lord, that it might be used for your kingdom and for your glory and for the work of the church. May you bless the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Not a word was heard at the tune that day. His shuffling soldiers' feet as they guarded the grave. One day, two days, three days had passed. Could it be that Jesus had breathed his last? Could it be that his father had forsaken him? Turn his back on his son, despising our sin. All hell seemed to whisper, just forget him, he's dead. Then the father looked down to his son, and he said, Arise, my love, arise, my love, the great No more suffering, arise, arise, my love. It's Easter, amen. The grave no longer holds him. He has been set free. He has died for our sins. Today is resurrection morning. Amen. 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 I'd like you to look with me this morning to John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And let us hear God's word together. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary came to the tomb and saw the stone had removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples. The one whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went forth toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed, for yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white. Sitting there with the body of Jesus, and, be, and had been lying, one in the, at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know what that it was Jesus. Jesus said to the woman, Why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned to him in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold to me. Because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I have ascended to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them, all, said all these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. It's a message we need to hear today in a world that is so chaotic and so broken we need to hear this message. He is alive. He is risen. And we don't just need to hear it on Sunday morning on Easter, but we need to hear it every opportunity we have because many times we as Christians live as if he's still in the tomb. Amen? We still live as if he is still dead. But he's not. 
I love what a pastor used to say to me one time. He says, I, my faith is so strong that I don't have to go back to the place and see where he lay. I don't have to go back to the tomb and to see uh, where they placed him. I don't have to see the stone roll back to believe and know that he has risen. And how will you know? You will know in your heart. You will know by the Holy Spirit that is present in you today. Jesus said this as he left. I do have to go. I do have to go the way of the tomb, of the cross, of the grave. But I'm not going to stay there. I'm going to live again. And you and I today can go the same way. We don't have to stay in the grave. We don't have to stay at the tomb. But instead, we like Christ will live. Live eternally. Revelations talks about a place that John saw. He said it was a beautiful place. Walls of jasper and gates of pearl and streets of gold. I'd say if there's streets of gold, there'll be no potholes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's nothing like getting a new set of tires and going down the highway and losing a couple of them in a pothole. But you imagine God has already got that worked out. It's got a beautiful, beautiful road. Streets of gold. Walls of jasper. Gates of pearl. And it says that there'll be no need for, for day or night because the Lamb of God will be the light. The tears shall be wiped from their eyes and we shall not cry again. There'll be no tears in heaven. We will say as if a day of 10,000 years was just a day. We will praise His name never ending. Oh, what a day that's going to be. Oh, what a glorious day that's going to be when there'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more death or sorrow or pain because he said, all these former things have passed away. And behold, I make all things new. He's not at that grave, but he is risen. And he is alive and he is gone to prepare a place for you. And as I said, he said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you alone. He said, I will leave you with the Holy Spirit that will be your comforter. So you're never alone. No matter how much times you felt like you were alone, you were never alone. He's always there. Can you not feel him today in the presence of this house of God? You not see him in the presence and smiles of the songs of the children and their laughter and any, even their chaos. It's joy. I was watching yesterday as my grandkids were playing on the swing set out the park. I realized I don't have the energy I once had, at least 40 years ago anyway. They just play. They get on the swing set and they just live. And they just go up and down, and the littlest one, Riley, decided that she'd go to the top this part of the little King's thing over there in Murray Park, and she got up the top. And I'm like, man, what is she doing? Is she not afraid? She's not afraid, and her and Kimmy's up there, they'll fall and get hurt. And I think, well, you know, I used to not be afraid. But now if I get more than two foot off the ground, I'm thinking this could be bad. But they just played, like, and they lived. That's what I saw. I saw them living. You put them on the swing set, and they say, swing me higher, swing me higher. And I said, if I do, you're going to the top. Swing me over the top. I don't care. They want to see everything. They want to touch everything. They want to experience everything. What happened to us? We got a little scared, didn't we? We got stuff, didn't we? I don't want to die and leave my stuff to my... My wife's next husband. Amen. I don't want to do that. But we should live like those children live on the playground. Live like the children were today. They were excited. They couldn't wait to see what was happening next. And they sang with enthusiasm of what Jesus is alive. We get so jaded in our world that we forget that we are alive. We should live every day as if we're alive. We went to a car show yesterday, and i got to tell this story, but 
went to a car show yesterday and in my head I had to spin it back on after I got back. That's what my wife says. I saw a 74 Noble like I had when I was in high school. My, my mind just, I just left me. I just, I was an outer body experience. I had to <laughs> just see this Noble. And I, it brought back so many wonderful memories and uh, so many times when I was growing up. And we were walking by this one little car, this little hot rod, little little uh, Ford, like a 23 mile or something, had a little little white wheels on it, and it was painted yellow and had little moonlights on it. It was just the coolest thing. If you're not into cars, it probably didn't mean nothing, but it was a big deal for me, and I was checking it out, and the engine and everything, and, and we told the kids, now these are somebody's toys. Please don't touch them, whatever you do. Little Riley got over to right in front of me. You gotta see this. She took her little finger and she held it right on the end of it and she got between me and her mother and she touched it. <laughs> she wasn't afraid to live, right? Now my dad would have, I'd been out for a few days. <laughs> but she wanted to touch it. She wanted to experience it. She wanted to be part of it. And that's the way we should be as God's people. Experience the spiritual life of God with great excitement because God has sent His Son Jesus to die for us and because He died and because He lived, so shall we live. Amen? So shall we live. You don't have to go around with a sad face and, and downhearted because the world is, is beating up on you. Yes, it has, but what does He say? Bring your burdens to me and lay them at the altar of God. And I'll pull those from you. I'll lift those burdens away that you may live. We should be the happiest people in the world. Amen, church? Because we serve a risen Savior. We don't serve someone's in the tomb. We don't serve someone who is just an artifact. But we serve a risen Savior who lived and died for us and took on the weight of the world for us, his sin, our sins. And because he lives, we should live also. The song I tried to sing to you a moment ago, Arise, my love, arise. It's a glorious day. It's a wonderful day that God has given us. As, as my old friend Cotton Ivy said, if you're on this side of the grass, you're doing pretty good. Amen? Think about that a minute. And we are. We're a blessed people. It excites my heart today to see you here today. I hope you'll come back. I hope this one sermon doesn't knock you out for the rest of the week. I want you to, the next the rest of the year, I want you to come back. We're glad to see you. It's exciting to come together as God's people and family. It doesn't matter who we are or where we're from or what we look like or where we're from, what family. We're all God's children. And it's good to come together in God's house and celebrate the greatest thing that ever happened to Christianity. It's when Jesus defeated the grave. The stone was rolled back. He's not here. He's risen. Wipe your tears. Put a smile on your face. Put a little pep in your step. And begin to live. Because he is risen. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, church. God, we thank you today for loving us so much that we realize today that you are truly risen. We are a people of resurrection. We are Easter people. And God, it's good to be in your house. It's good to celebrate and to lift up our voices and praise you and honor you. God, we only need to know today that you are risen. You are not in that grave. And that should make us, Lord, happy to live each day, excited about what tomorrow may bring. Thank you for this church. Thank you for its people. Thank you for everyone, Lord, who had decided today it was a day that they would get out of bed, they would go to church, and they'd hear about their Lord and their Savior. Lord, now let us live each day as if we are those Easter people, not afraid to live like the children, not afraid to step out in faith, not afraid to tell the world, I serve a risen Savior, and he's in the world today. And Lord, if there's one here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, this offer is a place they can bring their burdens, and Lord, start life afresh. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And in the honor of Jesus Christ, we pray, and amen.
Our closing hymn for the morning is going to be number 302 in your hymnal, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. We will sing verses 1 through 4. Please stand. You are able. next Sunday. We'd be glad to have you. We have Sunday school in between, so please come and join us. We have some wonderful Sunday school teachers. You can see they've done a great... Let's give the, the, the people that was in charge of kids today a great hand. They did a wonderful job. Great job. And it's so exciting to see them up here. And thank you for being here. Make sure if you see a minister today that you welcome and uh, make them feel glad they're here. We are so glad you're here. We're glad every time you come through the door. And if we can ever help you at the church in any way, we want to do so. And, uh, and for those that had to sit on the front this morning, thank you for the sacrifice. Some of you not used to sitting on the front. Uh, I know you didn't do anything wrong. You did a great thing. But we're glad you're here. And uh, I can say more and more. But I'm just excited as a pastor, excited as to be here with you today. This is my first Easter with you. And God has been really good. All hearts and minds clear before we dismiss. Let's receive the benediction. Gracious God, we go forth now to serve you wherever you call. We thank you for this wonderful time that we know that you are risen, you are alive.
And because you live, so shall we. And we go forth now to show the world that our Savior lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Make sure you welcome somebody today. Thank you.